Hey everybody, welcome to part two of our Let's Play for the Battletech Alpha Strike two-player starter set. Now, if you haven't watched part one, you can go open the cards and check it out today. Um, and it basically plays through the play this first scenario in the box set. We're gonna be playing the play this second scenario. It's all very descriptive. It does what it says in the tin. And this introduces some more advanced rules to Alpha Strike that are also in the Quick Start Guide, which include battlefield support, which you get a full deck of cards for in this box set, and also the rules for buildings, jumping on top of buildings, and basically the amount of structural damage they can take or the weight they can carry before they collapse and the impact that that will have on the game as well. Because that's the other thing you get a ton of in this box set is building miniatures for you to play around with your models. So, full clan forces from the box set. It's gonna be the entire battle star of, um, of, of clan mechs against two lances. Uh, and also we get the lance uh, rules as well because I have a command lance and a recon lance versus a battle lance or battle star, sorry of Clan Max, um, uh, basically added in layer-wise into the game. So it's nice, it kind of like procedurally takes you through the rules. So core mechanics for last game, more advanced like force construction um, and battlefield terrain and support stuff will be in this game. So we'll show you the Max, we'll show you the scenario and we'll get this underway. All right, so here's our forces all painted up. Clan snored, ready for business. Um, it's uh, it's a, a very cool uh, mix of stuff here. We have the crazy moving fire moth with a move of 30. 30. Fire Moth G? It's a G? Yep. It's, yeah, you know, it's G, G thing, baby. G money, son. That's right. We got the Warhawk T, uh, which is this newer uh, sculpt right now, clan mech right there. It kind of looks like a weird dire wolf. It looks like the Dollar General dire wolf. <laughs> looks like the big boy dire wolf. <laughs> <laughs> the dire wolf's pretty big. I don't know if you've seen the dire wolf. We got the Nova with its, like, I'm just going to bring all the medium laser hands. Uh, a Timber Wolf and then a Pouncer. I really like the profile of the Pouncer. Actually, it reminds me of Puma a little bit, but kind of even more sleek and streamlined. Uh, on my side, my command lance, large and in charge, it's the Atlas S4. I have an Archer 7C, a Warhammer 8R, and a Blackjack 3. Uh, then my recon lance, just going light, the Wraith. It's the new mech for this box set for the Inner Sphere, and it's so cool looking. Uh, the TR5 Wraith. I, I think it's my favorite mech in this box. We've got a slightly reposed uh, Phoenix Hawk 4M, a Locust 7V, also the repose, uh, a Wasp 5A with different guns. It's got a cool little, like laser light lasers on its hands and like a hip gun, which is kind of cool too. Uh, and that's my recon lance. That introduces the rules for um, buildings, battlefield support, and of course the force construction stuff for making your lances. So. Um, for my recon lance, all members get the maneuvering ace ability. Each mech reduces the cost of moving through woods terrain by one inch per movement. So everybody in the the um, the recon lance basically can move through woods without having to reduce their uh, their their movement by half. And then the command lance um, gains the combat intuition. So as long as the atlas isn't destroyed, that's my company commander. It's controlling player can reroll initiative rolls once per turn, and however the second roll still stands. So if I don't win initiative, I can reroll it. And then combat intuition, if the controlling player wins initiative, the mechs with the combat intuition can move and resolve all their attacks immediately during the movement phase, applying all damage effects immediately before any target mechs can act, but I can only use it once every three turns. So basically if I win initiative, all of my command lance guys get to move and fight during the movement phase, which is bonkers. We get the literal alpha strike. I get to designate two mechs to be able to do that. So I'm gonna designate my command mechs to be probably the two guys in charge, which would be of course my, one well, has to be my Atlas actually, cause it's my company commander. Uh, we'll have, who's my second in command gonna be? Sergeant Oswald Alexander and the Archer. So the Archer and the Atlas will be the two that can use combat intuition. Everybody else is just gonna get the reroll. Oh, uh, you can't do that. Well, it says the Atlas can't be one of the mechs. Oh, well then I'll make the Warhammer and the Archer. That's cool. All right, cause he's in charge. He doesn't get the combat intuition. These two get the combat intuition. I didn't see that called it. They cannot include the Atlas. That's cool. He's too busy giving me command rerolls to get the combat intuition. Um, and then you got your battle star. They're just lucky. I mean, it's because they're Ninja Turtles. They get to they get to be all different colors and have different things. So basically, lucky is just you get to reroll attacks. Um, and for every point of lucky, once per game, you can reroll a, a failed attack roll. So you have uh, seven, seven, because you have two plus. Ten. That's right. It's two plus your number of mechs in the lance or the, the star in this case. In order to actually unlock those abilities, you basically have to fulfill your force requirements. So it's all kind of pre-laid out for you in the Alpha Strike rules, but they do give you the um, the actual like sort of rubric for doing that. Uh, and they give you the rules for the ones that are in here. So for instance, clan organizations, a point is a single mech. Um, a star is five points, so five guys in a star. So this is a star of clan mechs. Now a lance is four mechs in an inner sphere formation, so I have two lances of four mechs here. Now when you make your formation, there's requirements, your ideal role, so who's gonna be in it, uh, kind of the, doing the best, and then your special rules. So for instance, for the battle lance, 
the requirements is at least half of the standard battle formation must be size three or greater. So you've got both the um, Mad Cat, the, I believe, Nova, and the Warhawk are all size three or greater, yeah? Running down then, because, uh, so yeah, so it's half running down, I guess, have to be. And then at least three mechs in the formation must also com uh, have any combination of brawler, sniper, and skirmisher. So who's a brawler, who's a sniper, and who's a skirmisher? Brawler, skirmisher, and striker? Sniper. Sniper? Yeah. So technically in this scenario, they don't qualify, they actually don't qualify for the Battle Lance rules, but we're going to give them to them anyway. Um, if you need to flip to the other classes for the... Um, the Pouncer or the Timberwolf. The Pouncer or the Timberwolf, then you have three or more that are in the ideal rules, or the requirement rules. And the ideal role is a brawler, because it's supposed to just be like a fighting lance. So for mine, the Recon Lance is... Uh, all mechs in recon formation must possess a minimum move of at least 10, and two must also be scouts and snipers. So all of my guys move at least 10, I'm like 16, 12, 20, and two must be scouts or snipers, both my locust and my wasp are scouts. So I, I fulfill those requirements. And that's why I get the maneuvering ace ability for the recon lance. So this one does qualify. And then for my command lance, at least one mech in the formation must be designated as command mech, so it's the atlas. 50% uh, of the mechs must be either sniper, missile boat, uh, skirmisher, or juggernaut. So for me, I've got sniper, missile boat, and then two brawlers. The roll, and then my bonus, of course, is the combat intuition and the command reroll. So all we'd have to do to have you qualify basically is flip over the Mad Cat, and then you'd be a battle lance. So our force is made. Uh, we're into buildings. Now, buildings can be light, medium, or heavy buildings. None of these buildings are going to be hardened because they're not military buildings. They're supposed to be just like office buildings and stuff like that. So light will be the little guys, so no matter how many stories there are, they're light. Medium will be the low buildings, and then heavy will be the two big buildings. Oh, one of the really cool things about these buildings is, you would think in most war games these buildings are like hard and impossible to move through. No, battle mechs can just walk directly through them. Oh yeah! We can Kool-Aid man our way through buildings if we want. It costs you an inch, um, an extra inch per inch of movement. So for a light building, for me to move across this two inch building costs four inches of movement, but then the building is basically destroyed at the end of it. It also does a point of damage to the building for every inch of travel through the structure. So it would take two points of damage, um, and it's collapse damage is basically one to three. So after two points, this thing would just collapse. So if the warmer just wanted to go and stomp through it, it would slow him down. But you know, that that concrete's not stopping this like 75, 80 ton mech. Like I said your, um, your uh, CF range, your um, collapse damage potentially is in a range. And it's, the idea is that you and your opponent would basically decide what that range would be. We would always have the, the middle range here basically for what comes in the box because it's designed to be what comes in the box. Also attack buildings uh, however you like. They're immobile targets, which means they're basically minus four to hit. So your TM at your target number goes down by four when you hit them because it's just standing there taking damage. And if they ever take, um, if they're damaged, like their construction factor is ever reduced to zero, they collapse. Now a collapsing building um, can be collapsed for a bunch of reasons. Either it takes enough damage that its construction factor goes to zero and it's destroyed. So two for little, three for medium, four for large. Or if there's ever excess weight on top of it higher than its weight capacity. So a size one can stand in front of the top of these little buildings without them collapsing. A size two, however, will just collapse the building, and then you take the damage uh, value plus one for every four full inches you fall as you collapse through it. So, like, if a size two landed on top of this thing, it would collapse and they'd take zero damage because they just punch through it. It's basically just them landing, landing inside packing peanuts. Whereas if a, a medium got, uh, like, three points of weight on top of it, they would collapse and take a point of damage. Now, if the heavy was collapsed, they would take two, uh, two points of damage, plus one for falling four inches through the building, basically, when it's destroyed. So you can actually just shoot buildings guys are standing on top yep. of to try and collapse them through it, which is a fun tactic as well. Last but not least is battlefield support. Now for what's an extraction raid, which is our small game size, we get five points of BSP. So that's your battlefield support points. You can spend them on basically whatever you like. Now there are more advanced rules for taking those things, but we get a deck of cards. Um, in the battle, uh, the Alpha Strike box set for what you want to take. So you can take bombing runs. You can take uh, like just like a, a airstrike with like a drone or an airplane. Artillery bombardments from a thumper. And as long as the cards add up to um, less battlefield support points than the total on the card, then you can have them. You can play them at any combat phase. You declare you're going to play them at the start of the combat phase in which you want to play them, and then they're an activation, just like activating a mech when you actually go to activate your guys. 
So let's say I'd lost the initiative and I was shooting first. I would say, hey, I'm gonna trigger my sniper and my thumper this round. And then as we would go through, I would decide when and how I wanted to do that, just like anything else. Now they have a couple numbers on them. There's your target number to hit. That's never modified for any reason. You just roll that number on 2d6. There's how much damage they do and there's their damage type. So the thumper, for instance, drops an AOE and if it misses, it'll scatter and stuff like that but they're super simple to use and we're each gonna get five points for this game. So I've chosen these two, basically as my BSPs and I'll get to use them during the combat phase. Jay doesn't have to show me what he's taken, but because we have five battlefield support points, we get to buy cards equal to the amount and then use them during our combat phases of any game turn as we like like additional activations. Additional rules for how terrain interacts with these different things and it actually makes it so that things like snipers or thumpers have different values. Like thumpers don't need line of sight because they're lobbing artillery over so you don't need to be able to see the thing that you're shooting. Snipers need a more direct line of fire, someone spotting for them. Same with like bombers versus lightning strikes and stuff. You can hide from them in your battlefield edge matters, but it's not using alpha strike. We're just gonna use them as additional attacks. Not using the quick start rules. It is using alpha strike, but the quick start rules, they're, they're relatively simple and sort of like bonus stuff that you get. So now we're into our scenario, Clash of Steel. We are go. The moment is calm line squalled. Mech warrior Demetrius kicked his mech into a run. Each step pounded into the pavement and he leaned into his mech into a turn and the intersection as the sounds of artillery blasts rocked the streets. Star captain, the target is well defended. The surrets must be up to something important. Aff mech warrior, fulfill the needs of the clan and teach them the futility of the resistance, said <laughs> clown. <laughs> I love that. I love that this is this is where we're going with this clan thing. Uh, racing around another corner, the first Howlander mech appeared in his sights as his lasers lanced at the target. Demetrius gave up the impulse and put his um, voice to a year of impatience. An echo filtered through his comms as the star repeated the cry, "Ilkhan!" So basically, you guys are are fighting for honor now against the Highlanders. So the situation is that neither side is looking for a big conclusive battle. The clan do not have the numbers, and the Highlanders don't want to die for a simple recon contract. We're just here to get paid but neither wants to withdraw in the face of the enemy. Looking to split the uh, clan in order to force uh, smaller engagements, the Highlanders advance into a ruined city of Aswan to play a game of cat and The clan forces the defenders the two lands of the Northland Highlanders. Each player selects three trees, three small buildings, and three large buildings as their terrain choices. The attacker places the terrain first. The players alternate placing terrain two pieces at a time on the battlefield within 24 of the center of the table. Any trees within four inches of another tree, no matter which player plays them, will become a wood template. Here we go, the terrain is all set up. We got buildings. Um, we've got uh, all of our little trees, two forest templates that end up being made from putting down trees and then some individual trees scattered around. As a defender, I've got my Atlas, Archer, Warhammer, and Blackjack in the command lance, all skill three. And then my Wraith, Wasp, Phoenix, Hawk, and Locust, also all skill three in my recon lance. Uh, the Jade, or the Clan Battlestar, sorry, has a Warhawk T, a Timberwolf T, uh, the Warhawk Skill 1. That's right. And then everything else is Skill 2, the Timberwolf, Nova, Pouncer, and Fire Moth. Now, if you want to, um, the Force Building section actually has the rules for changing your skill values. And based on the point, the base point cost of your mech, how much it costs to increase your point value. And the attacker chooses one of their battle mechs and places it at least 24 from the middle. So basically, it's from the center point. We're going to have little scoop deployment zones in the corners here. Um, and then we go back and forth placing mechs until everything's deployed. The first force that cripples destroys all the opposing mechs wins. We've each got four, five battlefield support points and we each have to use force withdrawal, um, which means that force withdrawal is if we lose half our structure um, and all of our armor, we have to fall back as our core movement towards the battlefield edge. Right, I basically split my command lands in two, my blackjack and my archer on this side, my atlas and my um, warhammer on the other side, my recon lance as well, with my phoenix hawk and my locust and my wasp and black um my wraith you got your warhawk hanging out on this flank uh team mad cat in the middle with the nova the pouncer and the fire moth on the side round one initiative I got eight i got two then you start going first now i do not double you so we are activating one to one right now Correct. i've got eight guys to your five my way up here it's gonna be eight and then two walking ten that's a ground move that is a ground move uh, my Locust can walk 20, <laughs> which means he can sprint 30, which is bonkers. Um, however, your Fire Moth can effectively teleport. <laughs> he walks 30. 30 or 45. Or sprints 45. So you basically, if you sprint, you just pick him up and put him anywhere on the table that you so feel like. So I guess the like. question is, like in a tournament or a convention setting, yeah. can he go onto another table? I mean, yes. I assume so. I think he just bamps like Nightcrawler. My, my, in the spirit of that, I'm just going to go 8... 16, 
20 and just go ground move behind this building and try not to die. Try desperately not to die. The other side of the speed equation is going to be my Warhawk. <laughs> Who's going to, I believe, meander. <laughs> he doesn't feel like he needs to walk quickly. He's going to meander his way on over He's here. He's laconic. That's the adjective <laughs> we would use for him. He has a laconic looking back. In the battle of the who can be slowest, Atlas only walks six. He's uh, he's oh, just gonna winning. go. I'm gonna win the battle of the who's got the the, the derpiest mech, and we're just gonna derp over to here. Derp and it is gonna go ten. So another ground move. And time to warhammer. Uh, the warhammer only walks eight, so he's gonna walk over to here. Put your pants on. Go eight, and then four more. I like it. Now, in order to Phoenix Hawk you properly, I need to probably run. I can run. Oh, Phoenix Hawk. Ah, you know what? No. What am I doing over here? Why? Ah, you've committed on this side. I should be doing Archer things to you. Mm, Archer's going to walk. He can only walk, I think, eight as well. Everyone's pretty easy. Oh, he walks 10. Not bad for a 70 ton. Uh, I think he actually might be 80 tons. He's going to go eight and then two more and just hull down. Do you? Where are you gonna teleport to there, Nightcrawler? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, I can go wherever I feel like. <laughs> you know how fast he is? <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> I just feel like standing over here now. <laughs> I can just go walk behind. Oh, geez. We're destroying the building. Go in behind? I mean, I'll take that bet. <laughs> I'm gonna go walk over here. Yeah, like, well, I'm gonna go well for my fireball. Well, <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> you gotta be you, Jay. You being, gotta, you gotta be. Exciting is more important than That's true. You gotta be you. Uh, and then it's just me left to move. So Blackjack doesn't want to die. He only walks eight. So he's gonna go hide behind a tree from the Warhawk, who will probably just delete him. He's gonna go 16. He's probably gonna sprint though, 24, because he doesn't want to get dead. So he's gonna go eight, and then 16 to here. And then eight more and just go hide behind this building. Be like, uh, deuces. And the Wraith doesn't really want to get Warhawked, so he's also going to run. Ah, no, he's just going to walk. He walks, I'm pretty sure, 16, though. He's very far. Yeah, he can just walk 16. God, he's awesome. He looks like he there. does lots of different things very well. He does. His Zentradi modus operandi is pretty cool. Well done. That's looking like movement. Now, uh, I won the initiative roll, which means that you, sir, have to shoot first. So you can declare and do your firing. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna fire moth your warhammer in the back. I mean that is that was always the play here. <laughs> so I am weapon skill or uh, sorry, I am skill two. Two, yeah. I'm TMM one. Three. That is all. <laughs> and I'm gonna overheat for one. And cause... you're lucky, so you can even re-roll this yeah. if you miss. Yeah, you might as well overheat for one if, if this is it. If this is your moment. So he's and... damaged what two at short range? No, no. Damage what? He's damaged four at short range? What? Oh my god, okay. Damage plus one four. For overheating. Yeah, plus, plus one, one for, for the rear. <laughs> and you have one armor, one structure? Yep. He's literally just he's a walking he's, bomb. He's Look the at fastest cannon that ever. Oh, lived. this is ridiculous. Alright, so, All right, so three, three plus. Oh my god, you're scud the disposal. Oh look at that. So take six damage. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that happens. Uh, so I got backshot for six, which takes away all but one of my armor. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh man, if I don't kill this guy now, I'm gonna be so upset. <laughs> I'd be so grotesquely upset. But that was totally worth it. I like that he oh, just yeah. goes wherever he wants and backshoots I'm somebody. Gonna take my, I'm gonna take my shot and then he's gonna go home. That's, <laughs> I have no illusions about what's happening with that. Uh, well, it better work, because he's. I've only got one guy who can shoot him. He's in the back arc of everybody else. Fuck. I'm gonna pounce your Warhammer. I mean, if there's one guy to take out fast, you might as well. And it is clearly going to be medium range, so I don't know why I've got to take out. <laughs> so two. So he is two. Three, four for range. Three, four for range. Five for TMM, six for cover. So six. Yeah. And this will be for three damage if I get it. I'm going to get my guts. No! Oh, that's no good. Conveniently. I was born lucky, son! Sixes! Oh, no! no! Not that lucky. Okay. Do you feel lucky, Pouncer? Right? Oh, no. no. Oh, yeah, you can see me with the Nova. Oh, my God. He can For sure. See you. Wow. I mean, the worm is huge, too. So the question is is the Nova actually in range? In 24, yeah. It no, is not. that's right. Okay. He does not have a long range. So I, I got, got lucky on that one. Can you see the Alice, maybe? Uh, as I could see the Warhammer right. until, until I looked. Uh, Mad Cat can see the Alice. The Mad Cat can see both of them, though. Ooh. So the Mad Cat. Timberwolf for us dirty, dirty inner sphere people. Dirty inner sphere types. 
I guess the right thing to do would be to engage the Atlas because it's going to be a little bit closer. So let's hope this is medium. The Atlas also has like 11 armor, which means it's all I got going for me really is that I'm upgunned. Long range, yeah? yeah I mean, your skill. At medium range, it does seven damage. Oh, that's true. <laughs> for range. Three What's your TMN on your Atlas. No, you're, you're long range. So it's going to be. Uh, oh, sorry. So, you're, uh, so you're, three, seven. Well, your your base skill two on him, right? Because everybody's skill two this game. Oh, I'm two, not three. Sorry. Yeah, you're two. So two, six for range. Yeah. Seven for cover. Eight for TMM. So eight. And if I get it, this will be uh, four damage. Many damage. Four at long range. Oh my god. No. No. But you're lucky. I'm not gonna reroll. Not, not on eight. That makes sense. Yeah. Save the luckies for those easy shots you miss. Wasp gonna get gonna get warhawked. I'm gonna warhawk you. That makes sense. Well, the Wasp has a mighty three boxes. <laughs> uh, so I am skill one. Okay. So uh, you're in charge. Uh, you have cover, which is two. Yeah. You are at medium range, which is three, four. Your yep. TMN is... Uh, the Wasp, three. So seven. Mm -hmm. So this is seven. This is what you That we're going to reroll. All right, down to five luckies remaining for the game. Oops. So this is... Come on, seven. Clan Snored! Oh, oh geez. Well, it well, hit on one. As long as it doesn't matter. Yeah it, 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 yeah, it didn't super crit me. And it is five damage. I'm gonna take a nap. <laughs> me. Well, I've lost oh, the war. I really wanted that Warhammer to go home. I know. It, well, it almost did. Uh, all right, so... I know what? I'll shoot him next turn with the Fire Moth. It'll be fine. Because <laughs> I'm about to miss. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So, I'm skill three on Team Phoenix Hawk. Uh, I am zero for range, but your team is probably bonkers. Four. Oh my god, seven. I got no lucky though, I got a heart. When you say, oh, don't worry, just roll a seven, that never works for me. So, can I hit him? Seven! I got him. So that's three damage, which... Oh, that's more than two. It's more than two. That's four because we're in the rear arc too. So I basically detonate the <laughs> 700 million things that are on him and he gets exploded. Well, Still totally that's worth it! totally worth it. Um, I don't think the Warhammer is going to have another turn after this, so I'm considering shooting your Mad Hat. Warhammer's are a privilege, not a right. Yeah, I want to shoot your Pouncer, I think. I'm going to overheat to do it. In medium, the Warhammer is going to be skill three, no, skill two, because that whole lance is skill two, because it's a command lance. So skill two, three, four for range, five for cover, six, uh, seven for your TMM? Yeah, correct. So seven for your TMM. And I'm overheating to do five damage. There's no whammy. Give me that seven again. Do it! No. And no lucky. So taking a heat. Harder for me to shoot next turn. Alice, I think you gotta shoot the Timberwolf in the way. He's skill two. Uh, he is... Long range. Long range, which makes him a six. And then your team is what, seven, eight? Seven, eight. And then... For the building. Or I could shoot the Pouncer. And if I shoot the Pouncer, I'll be two, three, four for range, five, six for TMM, seven for cover. I'll shoot the Pouncer. Let's just do it. Three for one. Give me that, give me that sweet, sweet seven. Got him for five. For five on the pouncer? Yep. That is a crit. Ooh. Let's roll and see what happened into your guts. I got a seven, which I think is a movement. MT. Yeah, movement hit. All right, so you're moving at half right now with that guy. So his base movement gets halved, then all the modifiers get applied. So he's down to six and five. And does he have half or less of his structure remaining? He does. So he's going to be limping towards your battlefield edge next turn as he goes into withdrawal. Well then, thanks for making him leave more slowly. <laughs> all right, there's Wraith. There's good news and there's bad news. There's bad news, that's right. Wraith is going to shoot your Timberwolf. He open skill three, four, five for your TMM, six, seven for range, and I can do three damage. Can I overheat? No, the Wraith does not have any overheating. So just looking for a seven. Gotcha, three damage. I can scratch the pan on the Timberwolf. Wasp's dead. He's going to spot, instead of firing, uh, the Archer. There's not a lot of point in indirect fire right now because I can see my, like, I'd want to indirect fire the Mad Cat and I already fired the Wraith, so I can't use him as a spotter. Interestingly, the IF rule, the indirect fire rule, doesn't appear to be in the quick start rule, so we're just not going to use it. I'm just going to direct fire onto the Warhawk with the Archer. We did realize that there's a rule called STL Stealth that neither of us had seen before, and who who has it on your team? Uh, no one. Oh, I have it though. On my Atlas, I'm plus one additional uh, TMM to, or um, target number to hit at medium and plus two at long. Because, you know, my Stealth Atlas. The Alpha Strike cards got reprinted. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know why I have a Stealth Atlas, but I'm super into it. Um, so anyway, I'm going to fire my Archer into your Warhawk. Three, uh, four, five for range, six for cover, and your TMM on the Warhawk is one, so seven. 
can I overheat the archer? Do I have missiles for days? No, I'm just damaged five. Let's go, even the seven. That's it, five damage into the Warhawk. Five, wow. Yeah, scratch the paint. Blackjack o'clock, taking a shot as well. It's in long range, which doesn't affect his damage, but does affect That's what you get for hanging out by the tree, hippie. That's it, so I'm three for skill. Oh, no, actually, sorry, he's actually part of the uh, command land, so he's skilled three. Yeah, commander's two, the rest of the guys are three. This is three, I don't know why I thought anybody was two. So everybody's three, so it's three, four, five, six, seven for range, eight for cover, nine for TMM. Get him, Blackjack. Sure, three more damage. Boom, a whole bunch of damage from the Blackjack. And then it's just, I guess, my Wasp left as his dying parting shot, he'll also shoot that Blackjack. It does one damage with no overheat, so this is just a parting shot. Three, four, five for range, six for TMM, seven for cover. Take one, and it's a crit! Uh, so whenever you get boxcars to hit, it's an automatic critical hit. From Hell's Heart, Khan! Nine, nothing. Nine's a no critical oh. hit. Dad, buddy got his point of damage from the grave. Phase, all the stuff gets removed, and it's new round, round three, round two, round two. Should have round two. I'm down a Mac, you're down a Mac. Six to five. I can re-roll it though with my command lance. I got a seven, so you are moving first. So you have four guys? No, you've got five guys remaining still. No, I have four guys. You have four guys, that's right, because I killed your farm off, that's right. But I don't have eight anymore because you killed one of mine, so we're still not doubled up. First. Adduces. Because he has to, he doesn't have to face away. Oh. He can back off. Yeah, otherwise I'd be rear shotting him. But he has to move towards your edge. Yeah, six. Because I shot his legs up a whole bunch. Well, locust, I think we save you. I think we go with big pun over here, the stealth atlas, and he's just gonna walk his six. I'm so angry about that. up to there <laughs> with a ground move. As the bagpipes start to play, Danny boy! The Atlas to, I have 11 armor and I hope nothing goes wrong. Things gonna go wrong? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no! All right, now that's a medium building. It can only hold three damage worth of guys. Yeah, that's uh, two size. <laughs> so size two on there, if it goes to size four, it's problems. Four's gonna go, now he's still got one armor left. He's just gonna walk his eight and go stand on this side of the building with a ground move and try not to die as well. Smoking crater in his back, which he doesn't love. All right. So we're gonna timber wolf or mad cat our way over here. He is the maddest of cats. Oh, that fight's gonna be terrible. <laughs> the thing about fighting mad cats, they have so much armor, it's insane. I'm feeling okay about the Warhawk, although I do feel like he may punish me this turn for being alive. Yes. Um, which is fine. I, I accept that's my fate. I'm gonna walk my blackjack over here and just hug this corner slightly and be done. My Warhawk's gonna run <laughs> and say bye. I don't like that. I that dogs came from eggs. I learned something today. It's all me. So we're gonna go with Team Archer, Sterling Archer. It's gonna walk over to here and go bracket the Mad Cat. Slash Timberwolf. I don't know if it's 16 to get behind that Warhawk. I think it's actually more like I'm gonna die if I go behind that Warhawk. So I'm gonna go with my Phoenix. Uh, and Marcus Phoenix over here is going to, I think, chase the Pouncer. Dom! I know, Mark and Dom. I forgot about Dom. Dom's my favorite part of that whole, that whole show. Dom's in the bathroom. He got dysentery. Stop, <laughs> stop crying, bitch. <laughs> well, he's just gonna. Oh, Nova's gonna kill me. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna go eight and then four more and try not to die to the Nova. Oh, this little guy, this little guy can safely go behind anybody. He's gonna go eight, 16, and four more and just be like, hello. <laughs> Everybody falls for banana in the tailpipe. That's, that's how this goes. I don't think the Wraith makes it there, but if you wanna shoot the Wraith, go for it. We're gonna go eight, 16, and just walk to this corner and be ready to pound that Timberwolf. Combat actions to you, sir. Would you like to declare any battlefield support? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I also will declare a battlefield support choice. Just one. I'm gonna do both of them. Okay, it's you don't you don't reveal them until you want to reveal them. You just declare oh. that you're doing them and put them down. Go for it, so, right, we'll so start how firing. Many, uh, how many damage is that thing? That little guy? That little guy's got three. Two Thanks. armor and one structure. Okay, so we'll start with the heavy strike. No! All right, so, so I don't care what your TMN is. Just a six to hit. So six to hit. So an airplane comes over and flies over. Fast movers come in. 
And they crank that's him for two, two damage. All right, so uh, that's in my guts. Well, actually, no, it's not. It's just my armor. Come on. And then we'll do the we'll follow up with the light strike. No, the out of five. So the airplane comes in and strafes the locust. Ah, <laughs> oh, he lives. Ah, he's not part of the lance. He's not part of the lance. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, right. The airplane didn't train all day for this. And I don't, I haven't lost half my structure, so technically I'm still in the game. I'm happy though, you just shot his legs off real good. All right, so that was shot one. Moving on. <laughs> uh, now, I would like to undo your Atlas. Mm, that's fair. So we're gonna start <laughs> off Atlas. with the Pouncer. Statless. Go Pouncer. Uh, so you are, yeah, you're definitely medium, not short. So it's going to be two, three, four. Five for my CMM, six for cover, seven for stealth. Eight, nine, because he jumped. Correct. So nine. And this will be for three damage. Do you want to overheat? Oh, I'm sorry. I've got my cards backwards. Okay. Or five damage. Uh, no, he's six. Six damage. Sorry. Can you overheat? I don't have any overheat. Okay, no. yeah. Just, just so six damage nine. for medium lasers. Nines for six damage. So, nah, yeah. we go lucky. This is a big deal. This is half my armor. So nine. Oh, none of those rerolls have been. Oh, can't wear it. <laughs> the cat who's mad. Uh, yeah. So the mad cat is just gonna try and straight kill my phoenix hawk. I think you actually do. He has exactly seven boxes. So two, uh, three, four, five, six for my TMM. Five, six for your TMN. Sure. Six. Okay. Six is dead. I will just legit die probably from this. So that is uh, seven, seven damage. damage. It's going to take a nap. That's all of his armor and structure. All right. Well, I lost the Phoenix Hawk. I was not surprised by that. So he's going to go down to Blaze of Glory. He's going to shoot back at the Timberwolf, just being like, I got this. Uh, so he's skill three <laughs> for heat because he's dead. So I might as well. Uh, so skill three, uh, four, five for range, six, seven for your TMM. Correct. And this will be four damage. So on a seven, get him! We do four damage in the armor of the Timberwolf, which has a bonkers amount of armor, but I've already scraped it a little two, bit. Two, three, four. Yeah, you're down to one left. Nice. Go with the Atlas. Uh, he's going to have a heat on him from last turn. Uh, so he is going to be skill three, goes to four. Then five, six for range, seven because you jumped. Uh, eight and nine, I believe, for your TMM on the war on the uh, Nova, right? Correct. Nine to hit. It's big numbers, no enemy. We're not going to overheat again. We got you though. That's going to be from medium range, four damage. Ooh. And Snort is uh, snorting it up. So we're going to go Warhammer. Have to steal some more robots. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> We've hey boss, we broke all the robots you gave us. Can we go steal more? Um, so the Warhammer have robots at home. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're supposed to bring your own robots. The Warhammer is going to overheat because I know that if I do, I'll kill that Nova, uh, and I really want to kill that Nova. So I'm going to overheat again. I so like I'm, your arrogance. I'm three goes to four because I'm already overheated. Uh, five, six for range. Uh, seven because you jumped. Eight, nine for your TMM again. It's all big plays here. We take big swings. The Highlands uh, on a nine. Oh, and we missed. So nothing from that. Wraith, I need you to do some damage here. Now you don't overheat. Uh, you're not in the rear. So you're just going to be your skill of three, four, five for range, six, seven for TMM on that uh, Timberwolf. Looking for a seven for three damage. Him with the lasers. Whoa, and it's a crit. So, and it's also a crit. Uh, and it's also a crit. So now, normally you can't multi-crit, but uh, we get one crit for being in the guts, and you do get an additional crit when you roll that box card. So the first crit for the box cards is of eight. Eight is a weapon hit. So you're gonna lose one point of damage from that guy next to me fires. And then the one for going into the guts is a four, which is fire, fire control, control, plus two to your shooting now. So Sterling Archer, taking a shot. So skill three, four, five for your TMM, six, seven for range with the Archer. So <laughs> Welcome to the danger zone on sevens. No, nothing. He shoots into the ground. Blackjack can't see anybody, and it's just banana on the tailpipe time from the Locust. Locust uh, doesn't have any overheat, unfortunately. He has one point of structure left. He's skill three, four for your TMM. I think that's it. And five because I sprinted. And five because you sprinted. So we're going to be hitting on fives for three damage. We got gotcha. you. For three? Yeah, because I'm in the oh, rear. Wow. Two plus one. That is a crit. And the guts. And I've gotten half of your structure now, so you're going to be yep. retreating next turn, too. So. A five is nothing. No critical hit. Turn. So we remove our casualties. I lost my Phoenix Hawk. You didn't lose anybody. Oh, sorry. I have to do my battlefield support still. Heavy strike. I think I'm going to do it on the 
Timberwolf, Timberwolf loses one more. Oh, if he loses two, he'll be done. Yeah, so I'm just gonna do my heavy strike on the Timberwolf, and it's a six to hit. Ah, uh, what about the, the the Nova? What's the Nova at? The Nova has four left, but you'd be into the- Into the guts. I'm gonna yeah. shoot the Nova okay. on a six. Go for the Nova. Got him, two damage, and then that's, and that's a, crit. a crit. A nine's nothing. Uh, the fast movers are zooming around the battlefield now. Uh, and so that's the end of round two. We're into round three initiative. Let's see who's going first. Seven? Nine. Nine, okay. I am going to declare, oh, I guess I could reroll yeah. for my commander because he's still alive. Nope. I am going to declare my combat intuition for my archer and my warhammer this turn though. He's shooting during the movement phase. Lost the initiative. Oh no, I can't do it a turn I don't win the initiative. So actually I can't do it. Never mind. It has to win the initiative and already use combat intuition. Because right. that would make because that makes sense, because otherwise I'd lose the initiative, go first with my movement, and get to shoot oh, you yeah. first. Feels a little feels a little broken if I could do that. I have one, two, three, four, five mechs left, six mechs left to your four. Correct. So we're not quite doubled up yet. Uh, I'm gonna go with the blackjack. And he's just gonna walk to the next tree. We're going from tree to tree. Hi. Right. Let me be done. <laughs> Pounds backwards. <laughs> I'm gonna pounce to the rear. Stealth Atlas, you're gonna walk six behind this building, being stealthy. Stealthily stealthing over here. Oh, no, he's going big. Yeah, you gotta do about there. Or, I think it's time for you to go continue to make friends with Salad. Hey, hey, come back here. Going back. Bye. <laughs> Let's go with the archer, just in case something goes terribly wrong. He can go 10, yeah, so he's gonna go two, four, six, eight, ten, just over this corner. He is gonna not use his full movement because he's gonna go right there. <laughs> you mad, bro? <laughs> you gotta stick, stick his back to the wall? Yep. Smart. See him from this side, but I, won't be, you, I can't currently see him with the wraith or the locust. Um, well, wow. yeah, this is all me. So I think we just keep on hunting. We want to hunt in such a way, though, that we're in the shadow of this building from the from the, the pouncer. Otherwise, we'll die. Keep that in between us because we're little. And then the wraith can't really do much, so he's gonna go hide back here behind the mad cat, but also in line of fire, unfortunately, of the Nova. Looking like it. So you, sir. I wait. I lost the initiative, which means I have to fire first. Okay. Well. I mean, <laughs> it feels like the right thing to do. Wraith's gonna actually shoot the Nova. Three, four, five for range. Six, seven for your TMO, I believe. Uh, you jumped, because you're in the air. So eight's to hit. I gotcha, for oh three. Gosh. He rolls down. Uh, Atlas is gonna blast the, ah, you know what, no. Warhammer's gonna blast the Timberwolf. Got it. Uh, he is super heated up, though, so he's five base now. Six for the cover, seven, eight for range, nine, ten for your TMM. So I get ten. Nope, missed. Uh, Atlas also heated up, so three goes to four, five, six for range, seven, eight for your TMM, nine for cover. Can we hit the Timberwolf? That's an eight. No, that misses two. And then Archer, I guess, in the back, but also you're in cover, so it's going to be three, four, five for range, six, seven for TMM, eight for cover. We gotcha, that's gonna be five for the archer, which will lay him down when it's done. Blackjack can't see anybody. I think everything's in the way over here. That building's too tall. So it's just gonna be the uh, band of tailpipe from the, from the locust into the warhawk. This is still skill two, sorry, skill three, sorry. Uh, zero for range, and then one for your TMM. You got it. Take three, and that lays him down too. Oh, next turn the pouncer leaves and I think that's gonna be game. Yep. So you do as much damage as you can. So how much damage does is that, have I touched the Atlas yet? No. The Atlas has and how much is the Warhammer? Zero. Make? The War the Warhammer only has seven remaining, so you could potentially kill him between the Puma or the Nova and the uh the Warhawk. Or the, the sorry, the six damage from the um the Timberwolf. Start off with the Warhawk, Zap. Blast Wraith. The Wraith. And you are in the rear, so you get plus one damage. So he is one. Yep. Two, three for range. Yep. Four for cover. Yep. Your TMN is three. Uh, so seven. So going for a seven. Seven for five damage. Ugh. And plus one because of back range. And I'm going to overheat. 
So five, six, so seven, so seven, seven damage. Seven damage if you hit me, yeah. Okay. No! I think that just kills the Wraith. Uh, no, he's got eight. He's got one left, but he's falling back. Five armor and then two of his structure, but roll me a crit because you went into the guts. Okay. You might still blow me up. I got seven. seven. So that's my movement. So MP movement. hit. Yeah, MP hit. So I'm half moving. I only move eight. Pouncer, if he's outside 24, is in range, but he might be able to see the Atlas or the uh, the Warhammer. Uh, he's just he's out. Outside of range. Yeah, he's out for everybody. Yeah. And he can't and see he the range. He can't see that guy through the building. Yeah. Oh, it's you two guys. So I'm sorry again. It's these two. The Warhammer has. He has a grand total of seven remaining. So the two of them could kill him because he's got six because I damaged his weapons. Yeah. And I think he's basically undamaged. And the Atlas has how many? Um, 20? 12 plus eight? Yep. A lot, but not that much. <laughs> uh, okay, so the Timberwolf okay. is going to shoot at the Warhammer. Okay. So he is going to be two, three, four for range. Five, six for fire control. Five, six for fire control. Uh, What's your TMM? Seven for cover, eight for my TMM. So eight total, and he's going to overheat twice. <laughs> so he does nine damage. Uh, so it's nine, but he's minus one damage. Yeah, so it's eight damage. Okay, well, that just kills me if you hit. Big numbers, no whammy. Well, we're not saving these for anything. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Born lucky. There cool. we go. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's the Warhammer lying down. Get out. No one likes you because I'm not going to take the Atlas out. The logical thing to do would be shoot the use the Nova to shoot the Wraith. Yeah, you'll kill the Wraith if you do. So and I'm in the open. The Nova is two. Uh, the range is three, four. Mm -hmm. Five, six, six, you jumped. And then nine for my TMM. So nine. Okay. Nine was lucky. Uh, you'll kill me if you hit me. I got one box left. Might as well. You're not using these for anything else. Do it. Oh, oh so close. So disappointing. You're going home. And he's going home. And you're going home. And I, basically, That's we, we roll for initiative, and then the, the he pounces the table. Because regardless, he's going to walk off the table. Yeah, and that'll be it. So the Highlanders take the day. We have got we are jacked up, though. We lost basically half our forces. You fell back. He actually has to fall back this turn as well, because he's lost all of his armor and half his structure. Um, I think the Locust basically not falling back won me that game, because I managed to hunt down two guys. Yeah, that was pretty much it. The, lo the Locust hunting down the Warhawk was a big deal. Like, I held out over here, just because I had so many boxes and so much armor, and that is kind of the Inner Spheres thing. But you were so smart with your battlefield assets, I completely forgot about mine for two turns, and well, they're perfect. Well, the big perfect. was the not being affected by the target modifiers, they're the perfect yes. take out zippy quicks. Yes, right? the wasps and the the locusts, and I am infamous for using those lights to like get your girl. heavy on my fire moth. That's right. I would well, just one of my first turn, so it wouldn't have changed anything yeah. really. But but it, but it, like the fact that you can just blow up those little lights is a huge deal. So there it is. We didn't. I I feel like we didn't jump on the buildings as much this game, but we had so much more stuff to brawl with each other. I actually really wanted to like shoot a building out from. In front of you too. I thought you were going to do that at one point, but I didn't. I realize. was actually hoping one of your lights was going to go on top of one of the tall buildings, and then I was just going to attack it. That's with right. Wolf. Yeah, 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 and like blow it up, and then all of a sudden just I'm in a collapse you. thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be perfect. So um, we got to see the full gamut of what these guys can do. Stealth Atlas is my new favorite thing. Uh, by the way, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna only play Stealth Atlas from now on. I'm going to be writing an angrily worded email when I get home. <laughs> but, but Stealth Atlas. Why is the only model in this whole starter set that has Stealth the Atlas? Other... To tell tell me one of your guys has it because I, I I'm don't just to see if one of the other variants has it I don't think any of my lights do no no that's it who done that's no. it nobody bye right. <laughs> right, everybody uh, I don't either it's literally just the atlas as far as I can see nope nope just the atlas the atlas has stealth and hey man why does it say STL on a ballpoint pen on your atlas card what the hell I, 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 I'm really good at writing in the rules I want uh, yeah, no, nobody here has stealth except for the Atlas. Look at him. Look at how stealthy he is. So there we go. The second half of our Let's Play on the new Battletech two-player starter set for Alpha Strike. Uh, concluding with the Northwind Highlanders managed to drive off the Clan Snord forces uh, from the cityscape in our Act 2 sort of like uh, scenario from the Quick Start rulebook. So... Uh, more Alpha Strike is on the way in the future using the Commander's Edition rules and some models from the starter set. I'm going to expand my Northman Highlanders with some more models um, from the current range uh, and hopefully paint up a few more pieces to just do some like sort of variations on my formations and clans and get up to full company strength. Jay's going to continue to expand his mercenary company, well, clan snored mercenary company, into the future too. And we'll see more games coming up soon. So big thanks for watching. Till then, Ash. Have a good day. 
Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games already recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look through the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Desperate Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.